Carl, what doesn't annoy you? That's the question, really. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and, uh, th th different things annoy me. But I don't just go about getting annoyed. Seems Stuff like happens, it. no, no, no. Stuff happens. What's annoyed then... you this week? Um, I mean, I tend to get annoyed when people around me get annoyed. I'm never the one who's going in somewhere getting annoyed. I'm quite happy go lucky me. <laughs> You're having a laugh. No, I'm not. That's rubbish. Uh, there is nothing I, about. No one would ever no, say that. No one. How would you describe Carl Pilkington? Oh, he's happy go lucky. <laughs> Whenever I see him, he's skipping along, whistling a tune. <laughs> I whistle a lot. I've told you. I'm yeah, only to annoy people when you're playing Scrabble. No, I, I, I just. At the end of the day, I think the problem is most of the day I'm on my own. <laughs> right. Right. I'm doing DIY at mm. home. I'm quite happy. Mm. No one's there annoying me. Right. I go for my lunch later than everyone else, so I don't have to see people. He's like Quasimodo, <laughs> isn't he? It's like it, coming down when everyone else is not yeah. there. <laughs> when no one's around. Uh, yeah. Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then that's the problem. Suzanne then comes home. She's been sort of with people, so she comes in with loads of energy, and I'm going just slow down. <coughs> Stop going on, then she's breaking stuff, and that's probably the last what thing. What do you mean she's breaking? breaking she's heavy handed, heavy handed with all the stuff I've been fixing. She broke the shutters. What else did she break? Well, you could have done a good job. I did do a good the job. The shutters? Where do you live? In the Old West? What do you mean, the shutters? <laughs> Some shutters on a window. She, she uh, every, I every like it dark. <laughs> I don't want them to see me. <laughs> what a mum. So what else has she broken? <laughs> She's always breaking stuff. <laughs> the light switch outside. Heavy handed. Don't actually uh, force his things. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter how hard you hit it or how hard you pull it. Just tell me if it doesn't work and I'll sort it. That's what I do these days. I'm like a caretaker to Suzanne's house. I'm wandering around <laughs> replacing stuff that she's fucked up. Jesus <laughs> 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 So, uh, so she annoys you, she comes oh. home, you've had a lovely day of peace on your own. So the only person that likes you and talks to you annoys you, <laughs> um... <laughs> and, uh, when you're at home doing your DIY, I'm, I want a picture of that scene. Well, d okay, right, we've never done this before, right, but let's do a typical day. We've known each other now, what, how long have we known Carl? Nearly ten years. Feels like a long time, right? yeah. So, let's do a typical day in the life of Carl Pilkington. So, for my first question is, what time does Suzanne have to wake up? Does that annoy you? Does she have to get up earlier than you? Because she's got a proper job. The alarm goes off. Mm. Uh, what, what time? time? About seven. That seems early. Uh, yeah, but I'm used to it now. Okay. Uh, now, moment. you spring out of bed, make her a cup of tea, do you? No. Right. I let her get up, mess about, um... By mess about, you mean get ready for work? <laughs> yeah. Right. She's not being quiet. So I, I'm then, I'm awake now, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. What do you mean she's not being quiet? Well, she's just banging about, like I say, mm. heavy-handed. Every, I don't know how she does it. It's just doors and stuff. Everything seems like the Hulk's in the house. <laughs> 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 Bounding about. Just don't, don't be heavy-handed with it. When, even like pulling the curtains shut and stuff. Because it's not her who has to fix it. Do you know what I mean? When yeah. she's yanking at them and pulling them open, it's like, just, just pull them like that, I've put them on a nice rail, just pull them slowly like that. Right. It's things like that. This sounds like these jobs aren't done correctly. That's what they I'm are done proper. No, because if you get a, like a, you know, if you get a bad pair of jeans and someone's like, oh, you've ripped it, a good pair of jeans, they won't rip, boy. No, just look after it. It doesn't matter if you've got good jeans or poor jeans. Treat them the same. Mm. Look after your stuff. Mm. I've always been like that. I know. I've yeah. told you, from a young age, I didn't like people sitting on my bed after I'd made it. It was yeah. like, I've, I've gone to the trouble, I've made it, there's no creases in it, don't sit on it, there's a chair there, use the chair. Sure. Okay. Um, That's mental, but yeah. It's <laughs> not mental. It's like, it's the behaviour of a It's not that. mental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Suzanne's so passionate got, about the place. So, the, the doors, I mean, what's up with the doors? Do they squeak, or is the no. catch been done wrongly on no. them, or, um, no, no, is it, it the wrong no. uh, wood or something? Or something no, it's just heavy handed. No. Right, okay. So yeah. then, she has a shower. Right. Uh, if I have a shower, I like to go second, because I've, I'm, I've got the Mr. Muscle spray. That she doesn't do properly. Right. Do you breakfast together? Just sit, sit on the bed, have some, uh, Oh, I have you made the bed yet? Yeah, yeah, it's made. Well, don't sit oh, on the bed if it's made. It's no, mad. I've, I've calmed down, chair. I've calmed down, that's what I've said to her. As I'm getting older, yeah. I'm easing a bit. Yeah, you're like Doris Day. 
So um, sit on the bed, look out the window. Why are you having breakfast not sat on the bed? That yeah, makes sense to me. Sense Either to have me. breakfast in bed, just classic, the radio, or at the kitchen table. The radio's in there, and it's just kind of. So you get up, make breakfast, and go back and sit on the bed because the radio's What's in there. What's going on with the crumbs, Rick? I don't know what the crumbs are doing, the but the I don't know why they've got two radios. Crumbs. Hang on, you don't know what I'm having. I'm having cornflakes. No crumbs with cornflakes. No, but then. so you haven't. Two of you are sat there. Are you sat on opposite sides of the bed looking at each other, or are you both sat on the sides oh, of the sucks. bed looking at the wall, listening to the radio, eating a bowl of cornflakes? Yeah. Well, you, are you sort of cross-legged on the bed, or your legs are down on the Just floor? down on the floor. Right. Fully clothed now, you've had the showers. Uh, I might have a t-shirt on and my undies. Okay. I haven't put my socks on yet, I don't like socks. I'd put them on last. Why don't you like socks? They just cut off your freedom. <laughs> I don't know how socks can cut off anything. It's all right if your feet are cold, they're nice to put on, but mm. I don't know, I, my socks are never that well fitting, so I don't really enjoy <laughs> but wearing But why don't you get socks that fit yeah, you? Because right I never size. buy socks, do they I? They should I be the same people. size as your shoes. Yeah, yeah I, I let other people buy them for me and they're never quite right. But, hold on though, this is a rule you've imposed on yourself. <laughs> I'm only telling you because you've asked, I wasn't- I didn't come in here moaning about it. Socks saying, cut off your freedom. Never right, heard that before. Okay. I mean, Mandela said it. S well, yeah, liver and socks compared to the Berlin Wall. Yeah, I think I think William Wallace said it as well. <laughs> right. Yeah, imagine that in Braveheart. Just takes his socks off and goes yeah. freedom. Yeah. Anyway, I... then I'll say right on your way to work. Take the bin bag out. Right. She'll do that, and then I get on with whatever I've got to do that day. A little kiss on the cheek on the. But floor. why do you say pat on the head? <laughs> <laughs> who pats who on the head? I'll just sort of rub the back of her head. There you go, see you later. Th then what? You're there, you've got your pants on, you've got your t-shirt on, well, you've you got your listen to the flags. news, you listen to what's being said on the radio, we'll have a little discussion about it. Sometimes she's in the mood for it, sometimes she'll go, don't worry about it. Right, what, now what, what, to what would she say that to then? What would you worry about if you heard on the news? I heard something about worms getting teeth. <laughs> 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 right. And God. she was kind of going, you know, you're not meant to worry about this news story, this <laughs> war's going on stuff, you never <laughs> listen to them. Do you remember the story of the worms with the teeth? Should we be alarmed ourselves? What was the information? It was just saying how, um, it was all about nature versus nurture thing. Right. And saying how worms that are growing up in a family where there's loads of food around. What do you mean growing up in a family? Just a family of worms in the soil. Right. They're going through the soil. If there's loads of food mm. for everyone, and they don't have to fight for food. Right. They're quite happy, they don't have teeth. The ones, like the rough of worms, where there's not enough, it's like a massive family, the kids left, right and centre, but they haven't got the nutrients to feed them all, mm. they fight against each other, and the ones, mm. they're, they're growing teeth now. I, I didn't hear the new story, so I I'm going out on a limb here. I don't think it was about a worm being maybe more working class and chavvy though, with like big families, look at that, big family can't even feed them all. And then you've got middle class worms going, well, we've got enough food for everyone because we haven't, uh, overbred. You know what people are like now? They've got researchers watching all sorts of stuff. Right. Keeping their eye on everything. When you don't have to worry about it. A worm with teeth, if they've got teeth or not, to me it is not a problem. Not a problem at all. I normally save a worm if I see one. So, oh, in, a, in the rain, on a pavement. If I see it there, I go, someone's gonna stand on that and I yeah. chuck it and I sort of watch it for a bit, see which way it was going, give it an helping hand. <laughs> see which way it was going, <laughs> like it had an aim. Well, see they which... No, they, they do though, don't they? They're always going somewhere. Yeah. He's you, can't, dentist. you can't tell, you don't know which <laughs> end its head's on. Do you check that it's got teeth first? Because there's, there's, uh, there's some crunchy well, food or there's some soft food. Like I said, it doesn't concern me, but I listen to it because it's on the radio. Okay, so we're, so okay, so it's five past eight. Suzanne's gone out. You've rubbed the back of her head. She's took the rubbish out. You're there, pants, t-shirt, no socks, no socks yet. What happens to the bowls of um, X cornflakes? Where do they go? Have you got? I wash up. You wash up. That's the f next thing you do, is it? Mm. Right. Okay. Now yeah. then, do you plan ahead for the day? Do you think to yourself, Carl, make a list of stuff to do, or do you just let it go? I you let it. I let it happen. I don't like uh, the 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 worst thing for me mm. is. Planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I'm told like, you before. Like, yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't get anything done by planning. Is what I don't. You said. I don't mm. like the idea of waking up going. I've got to do that today because that's when you you don't look forward to doing the thing. Yep. Mm. Whereas I get up, I'm washing up. I will look at a wall and I'll go. Those tiles aren't very good. I'm going to rip them off. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. I mean, forget idiot abroad. Forget the Ricky Gervais show. Let's just have twenty four seven Carl Cam. Just, um, think how that would look. He gets up, he's, he's, Suzanne leaves, 
we get him to, you know, uh, t he looks at a wall. <laughs> he we starts go tearing the <laughs> tiles off. <laughs> yeah. It looks like the behaviour of a psychopath, doesn't it? <laughs> oh. So. Are there handles on so the inside of your house? This is, this is what worries me, though. The fact that you're always doing DIY suggests that you didn't do a good job in the first place. No, Steve, am I wrong? Never, I, am, exactly I never right ever there. do the same thing twice. No, Once it's done, it's done. Hmm. I do it right. I take my time. I get it done. So right. this is other people's workmanship that you're undoing Definitely. and doing properly. Okay, right. Now the radio's in the bedroom, so you can't oh. listen to the radio when you're doing your work. I normally drag it through. You drag it through. How big is it? No, it's just a little clock radio thing. So right. it's plugged in. Yeah, it's plugged uh, yeah. In, yeah. Okay. Then. Uh, well, hang on a minute. Let's go back because presumably you've you've dismantled the tiles. You've got to pop down and get all your supplies, haven't you, from B and Q or somewhere? Well, I went to home base. Might have a walk there if the weather's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, twenty-five minute walk. That's all right. 25 minutes is a bit of a jaunt though, because you've got to carry all the stuff back, haven't you? Depends what I'm buying. If right. I'm just buying a tub of adhesive, yep. I can handle that. It's if you're getting heavier stuff. Mm. Um, what do you do in that case? Drive. Okay, get the motor. Yeah. But now, I don't like shifting that, because you lose your parking now, space. Now, do you put Doesn't like moving the car, because he loses his parking space. So don't use the car for mm. fear of losing the parking space. Yeah. yeah. Not, not if I can help it. Now, question. When you go to home base, or B&Q, or some sort of tile shop or a, a lumber yard, um, do you affect a more working class accent like I've heard Steve talking to his carpenters? I always do that, yeah. I don't, I don't have to talk to anyone. I know exactly what I'm getting. Straight in there. I know the layout. I've been in there plenty of times. Mm. I might, I might have a bit of a browse whilst I'm there, like looking at different tools. Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't for, um, meeting up with me and Steve and Suzanne being home between, I don't know, six o'clock at night and eight the next morning, you wouldn't talk to anyone, would you? Do you have any friends that you might talk to? Yeah, talk to some people on the phone. But then I soon get bored with that. Right. Mm. About five minutes in I realise I'm not listening anymore. <laughs> 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 Who's the last person? You have to name names, but just give a generic name to. Who's the last- who's a f What's the point old, of that? Old schoolmate? Or is it someone you've met more recently? Um, Showbiz someone pal? more recently. Right. And, you know, it's fine at the beginning, it's like, oh yeah, that's good. So what were you talking about that you got bored about? Oh, I can't remember because I got bored with yeah. it. And I, I'm normally, you see, the thing is these days, people haven't got your proper attention after because it's a mobile, so you can carry on doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was ripping old raw plugs out of the wall. <laughs> Jesus. And he was talking and I kind of thought, I hope he doesn't say what do you think of that in a minute because I wasn't listening. Right. So what's the point of having the conversation? I don't know. But hold on, I call you up. It's the presumably the first phone call you get. It's the first Sometimes. phone call I make. Sometimes. I call you up and I go, "What's going on, boy?" Right? Yeah, but most of the time I don't tell you because you'll go, "Right, what are you doing doing DIY? Pay someone to do it." And we have to have all that e every day, the same <laughs> chat. <laughs> if I'm not doing DIY, I wouldn't be doing anything. And then I get grumpy. Suzanne comes home. She goes, "What have you done today?" And I go, "Nothing." And I get fed up then because I don't because feel like I've I'm done, worth anything. Because I've done. I work harder for your career than you do. I'm always doing stuff to try and get you to do stuff. I'm always trying to get you shows and things, and I'm always trying to get you to get out there and do something towards it. I don't want to do. I've done it now. Yeah, I've done it. Yeah, we did the program. It goes out on the telly. Job done. Mm. If people want to watch it, they watch it. There's no point me cropping up on loose women asking <laughs> people to tune into my program. They either want to watch it or they don't. If they're watching loose women, I don't want them watching my program. <laughs> There's a lot of crap on the telly, and that's why, <laughs> in a way, people go, oh, it's amazing, isn't it, that you're on the telly? No, not really. Because there's loads of garbage on there. Anyone can get on it. Yeah. Well, that's It's true, not eh? special anymore. That's it used true. to be special in the 80s when it was like three channels, four channels. Now it's a doddle. But that's why you should make special TV. That, I, I like the fact that, um, in anything you do, 90% in any framework, in any genre you work in, is crap. That's why it's nice to be in that 10%. That's why it's nice to do something that's special. You know, the great thing about Idiot Abroad is, people haven't seen anything like it before. I'm so proud of it. It's great. So, mm -hmm. the fact that you're in a genre where not something is 90% crap, that makes you look better. You should relish that. No, because I don't think people who are watching Loose Women like it. They, they want some, some sort of flumpf telly, don't they? That's, <laughs> that they don't have to- <laughs> They don't have to think about. Yeah. Do you I mean like... do you mean the program The Flumps? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say flump. He said flump. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, now this is now. How are you spelling flump? It's F L U M P H. P H flump. P H flump. P F. P F. 
Oh, PF? flump. Okay. Pl- flump telly. Yeah, flump. Flump telly. So, 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 so <laughs> and what would be an example of flump telly? <laughs> What's flump no, telly? No, I don't want to go slagging stuff off, but no. I'm just saying I watch less would and less telly now. Flump telly. It, it, it would be a typical it's, person. It's typical. Is it those? Is it all for those awful? Um, docu-soaps when people live their life like an open wound, saying, look, me fanny fell off. And, and, uh, I haven't seen that. But yeah, <laughs> all that, all that sort of stuff. I do, honestly, the amount of telly I watch now, compared to a few years ago, it's non-existent. <laughs> Suzanne comes home at night, I might watch a Grand Designs to mm. get and some tips off it. Mm. Other than that- <laughs> So that's work, you count that as work, don't you? Research, at least. At least, at least you learn something. Does Suzanne like Grand Designs? She likes to see the end result, to see what it looks like, but she gets bored at the beginning when it's just a load of bricks. Right. She's got enough of her own. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. so... <laughs> and then we'll just sit and have a game of crib, or... <laughs> You'd have been happy in the Blitz, wouldn't you? You'd have been happy down in one of those subway stations. <laughs> oh, Suzanne, what? What? Chimney's gone. <laughs> oh no, what was that? Doodlebug. <laughs> I better go up there. Oh, leave it. Well, it's fine. <laughs> oh, you, 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 that's bloody heavy handed, them Germans. They're bloody <laughs> heavy handed. Well, let's go back a bit here. So, you, 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 you've gone down BQ, you've got your supplies, you've done a bit of tiling. Good job. Please, job. you're halfway through. Sp- spot a lunch around three ish. Yeah. What do you do? Do you pop out for lunch in a cab? Uh, depends. Sometimes, Suzanne, just, as I pat her on the edge, she sometimes says, There's some ham in the fridge. And I'll go, All right. Um, <laughs> I love it. Like, there's a little choreograph. If I, oh, I better pat on the head, I don't know what's <laughs> yeah, going to eat today. Yeah. Oh, uh, Carl <laughs> thinks, like, uh, Pavlovian conditioning. Yeah. Last time I patted on her head, she told me about some food in the fridge. <laughs> Bye, love, take the rubbish out, I'm in the fridge. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant, yeah, okay. So, I'll eat that. Um, now, just, just, I w- the radio's on the whole time? Is there, because oh, I want to, I want to picture this, you're not working in silence, radio's on the whole time. That little squeaky radio that's sort of halfway in the doorway of the bedroom and the lounge or whatever, you've got the radio. And what station do you listen to? You listen to music? You listen Sometimes to I listen to sort of speech stuff. Right. Sometimes I listen to music. What would be speech? Like a, kind of one of those phone-in programmes or? Uh, phone-ins do me head in a bit. Right. I like, uh, you know, reports on stuff. Right. Yeah. Just little, little Radio things. 5 maybe? Yeah, 5 Live. That's yeah. alright. Uh. So you like to be informed as you go? Um, yeah, just so it gives me something to talk about, because if you're not with anyone all day, mm. your brain's not doing anything, is it? Mm, mm. Whereas me listening to them, it's like having someone in the room telling you stuff without you having to chat back. I Perfect. prefer that. I'm a big, I'm a bigger listener than I'm a, a talker. Yeah. Whereas Perfect. these days a lot of people are talking but they're not listening. Mm. Perfect. So- Although you're not listening to actual humans like your friends when they call no, you up. they're just mithering. Um, and do you make sure that you get everything done and dusted before Suzanne comes home so she comes into a spotless place? Yeah. And you, so she comes in, do you instantly show her the work you've done or do you just let her notice it for Sometimes herself? Sometimes I just leave it and see how long it takes for her to go, oh, you've done that. Okay. Uh, and, uh, if she doesn't notice it, are you annoyed or are you excited to tell her? Sometimes I forget. <laughs> 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 he does it again the what? next day. <laughs> yeah. That time a bit shoddy. <laughs> <laughs> I should do that. <laughs> wow, sometimes you forget. Um, oh. And so is it, it's not the equivalent of when a lady comes to him and says, uh, oh, you've noticed me, air, me new hairdo. Is it sort of the equivalent for you if she hasn't noticed? You don't get frustrated. Now, you do mm. notice her new hairdos, don't you? Because you say you don't like them. So what does she say about your tiling? Uh, no, most of the stuff I do, she goes, that's good. But sometimes she'll go, why don't we just get someone in to do it? What, before or after? Well, it depends what it is. If it's something that, that's big and has uh, been bothering her, but it's not bothering me, mm. I'm saying I'll sort it out. Well, what's an example of something that's big that bothers her and not you? Um, I had some wires hanging out the wall that, that I, I needed to uh, patch up the plaster. Now, these wires, were they exposed wires, for yeah. example, that you could you could have touched them and got an electric shock yeah. or? Yeah. Well, that is, a, that is a big thing, isn't it? That is yeah, but we haven't got kids running about the house. Who's no. coming in messing with wires on the walls? Just don't touch it. I know they're there. You know they're there. Right. We don't need to put up a sign. We don't need to cone it off. We <laughs> know they're hanging out. I'll sort it. Right. Don't worry about it. Okay. She's going to get someone in. Well, no, I won't get someone in. Because, you see, the thing is she got someone in once mm. when the oven blew up. <laughs> right? I said, right. leave it. I'll sort it. I'll look at it. No, you don't know what you're doing. Get someone in. No, let me have a look. No, get someone in. She calls someone up, they come round. 
the old £80 call-out charge business straight mm. away. Mm. They pull it out, they go, oh, it was the fuse and the plug. Now, I could have sorted that out, but she didn't give me a chance. So now, it's good now, because I've got that on the old back burner. So every time she says, let's call someone out, I'll go, oven. Because <laughs> it'll literally remind it. <laughs> so I'm glad in a way that she did. But so now she just leaves it. She doesn't interfere. Now, Carl, do you Carl, Carl, I've got terrible pains. Oven. <laughs> um, Have you sorted that problem? Uh, not yet. No, so the wire's still like, hanging out of the wall. Yeah, mm. yeah, but I know what to do. It's just yeah. that I want to do the but other jobs first. Yeah, but she's concerned about that one, and it's also very dangerous. It's not that dangerous. Mm. Steve. Oven. <laughs> um, I mean, you said if I speak to anyone in the day, I normally speak to my mum and dad at some point every day. Really? Do you? Every day you speak to your mum and dad? Yeah. Could you take us through a typical conversation with your dad? He calls up. Um, what does he say? What does he say? He said, oh, I've just been out, got your mum some medicine. Well, every time he calls, he's no, been I'm out I'm just telling you the last call out. Oh, I see. Sorry. Right. Um, what's the weather like? What was that with your mum? Oh, she's just got a cough. It's cold, isn't it? Winter. Cold. Yeah. Um, Expectorant? Did you get- was it, was it a tickly cough or a chesty cough? Uh, I think it's chesty. Mm. Get an Because they've got like a coal fire and it's- uh, when I go there I'm always coughing and that. It's like smoking 20 a day having one of them in the house. <laughs> so, <laughs> she's always coughing. So, uh, yeah, been and out- And she smokes 20 a day. <laughs> been out. Got some Benelin. Does she smoke, your mum? No, she used to. Yeah. Jacked it in when- when I was born. Oh, really? Yeah. Good. Uh, it had already done the damage. Yeah, it, it, she smoked more <laughs> through the pregnancy. <laughs> yeah. She looked at it and went, oh, I'm not smoking again. Yeah, or drinking. <laughs> Look at that fucking head. <laughs> so yeah, he said, oh, the weather's bad, is it bad there? I went, yeah. So I've just been out, got some medicine, what are you doing? I said, I'm ripping tiles off the wall. He said, uh, oh, that's good. So your mum wants me to do the tiling in the kitchen. Yeah. So why don't you do it? He said, oh, it's too much of a big job. Yeah. So just do a wall at a time. He said, yeah, I might do. Right. Uh, I'm about to say, I'm getting fucking bored. <laughs> He said, uh, he might just sort of plaster over the tiles and sort of, you know, paint over that. I said, mm. well, it's not that good though, is it? Because if, if you drill into it Jesus and you smash a tile in, yeah. the plaster that's mm. on the tiles can crack and go right across. So it's easy just to take them off. So it doesn't take that long to take them off. Just do the job properly. Steve, you're going soon. I'm and, actually um, the weekend, Rick. So okay. anyway, he just um. said, oh, I might do that. But he's got nothing else to do. So that's why I was saying- Do you let him again in? Oh, that's good. Uh, just- Ah, uh, sorry, go on. And then my mum might get on, and um, okay, let's, okay, what's, what's she got to say? Look forward to this. She just tells me a bit of it. She like, what was it the other day? She said, "Oh, have you seen them tablets? Not food." <laughs> <laughs> She's just don't like you. She's just like you. Oh God, was she a fucking astronaut? <laughs> have you seen them tablets? What a food! Oh, <laughs> go on, God. what other tablets are like food? Uh, no, that's what it is. It's like the spaceman food. They've come out and we're just chatting about them. She's saying, "Oh, what do you mean yeah. they've come out? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah." Because we live in a busy world and everything, where mm -hmm. people haven't got time to have a proper lunch. Are you sure this isn't like one of those innovation things that, uh, that when you when you can buy oxygen in a canister? Well, you didn't you buy one of those ones? Really? Yeah. <laughs> what would you need oxygen? Well, because I was having a race with my mate, and I thought, "Oh, I just have a bit of that on the way round." Right? It didn't work. How far were you running? I don't know. It was a race over a mile. And I thought, oh, so you I, were laden down with I, an oxygen. Unfair advantage here. While he was out training, I was just buying something <laughs> from the innovation catalogue. <laughs> yeah. So you were running and you had a little. You, you no, pulled no. it out and you went, what curses? I, I took it beforehand. I thought, well, I got, uh, uh, of course it, it. Well, one, it didn't work. And but two, what's it supposed to do? To just well, I thought it would oxygenate my blood more so I could. I could. I mean, it was. Well, it was flawed. <laughs> it was a flawed <laughs> argument. It was a flawed <laughs> argument. How much did you pay for I'll it? I'll be honest. I don't know. I don't know, five quid or something. So, uh, what, you have a, you had a life in which you had enough time knowing that there was a race <laughs> coming up to order something from the Innovations Catalogue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was we this little, race? Why was- We had a little challenge. <clears throat> was this a common thing? You had often- had I think I was on the dole at the time. I think I was about twenty-five. And, uh- I mean, if you're on the dole and you've barely got any cash, you're buying air. <laughs> 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 oh jeez. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I look back now, yeah. uh, it was a folly. Yeah. Oh dear. That's what Ricky, how he occupies his free days, Carl. Come on, twenty odd years ago, mm. I don't, I don't, now I actually work out. Now, oh, I'd like to race him now. Mm. Woo! Woo how is Usain Bolt? <laughs> yeah, he's good, he's good, he's gone a long way. <laughs> Um, um, so your mum calls up, what does she say? She said there's a new pill out that's a, that's a meal, yeah. We chat about that for a bit. Mm. 
and then um, she always says watch the road at the end of the call really yeah she always said that watch the road she doesn't uh, mean the film The Road <laughs> with Viggo Mortensen no she's <laughs> just paranoid that I'm going to get run over right so every time I've never been run over no mm. uh, well that's because she always tells you to watch the road maybe, yeah maybe that's the case and do you l watch the road yeah, I, I mean, think I do. She means just stare out the window and watch the road. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> She's fascinated anything. by it. <laughs> exactly, watch the road. There's cars going There's past. moving things. There's big bits of metal with wheels. <laughs> so, oh, you did walk into a field of nettles once, so let's not forget that. So, you have a call like this, scintillating phone conversation like this every day with your parents. Yeah. And does she always try to find a piece of it, new information she thinks might interest you That's sweet, day? though. That's yeah, sweet that you absolutely. talk to his parents every day. Um... I remember, um, when I went off to, uh, university, um, uh, my brother-in-law dropped me off, my mum came up with me, and she was leaving, and she was sort of crying, and, uh, and I was making up, I was, I was pretending to be really sort of sad and whining about that, and then I thought, oh, I better, I better call her up. She said, call me. Right, so I think I waited till the following Sunday, it'd been about a week, right? And I called her up, and, um, I couldn't just call her up. I suppose it had to be ironic, because I was probably embarrassed about calling my mum, like, I wanted to speak to her too, so I, swear, I just called her up, and do you remember she went, Hello? I went, Mum? She went, well, Yeah? I went, It's Ricky. She went, What's the matter? I said, <laughs> I think I'm blind. <laughs> she went, What? I went, No, nah, how's it going? She went, You silly bleeder, I nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so if you want to spice up calls to your mum, pretend you've had a terrible accident and that you're blind. <laughs> I like it when I phone my gran, and the only other people that ever phone my gran is me, my sister, or my parents. No one else ever calls. And every time she picks up, she goes, Hello? Like, it could be a monster that's gonna come through the phone line. But also, it's like she's never- she, like, each time she hears it ring, it surprises her. Like, there's a noise in the house, and she f wanders around, she finds an object that's ringing. <laughs> and she doesn't know what it is, and she sort of hits buttons and tells yeah. her, Hello? Well, she's tried three already. And- but what annoys me is she'll- I'll say, Hello, Gran, and she'll go, Who's that? Oh, come on! <laughs> You must recognise me by now. I'm the only person who calls except about three other people. <laughs> I'm not the girl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and my granddad, she's had this for years. It's not just that she gets up. She, she, she'll, <laughs> she'll go through all of the family's name until she gets to oh, me. Oh, my used to do that. My uh, used to do so that, So she knows yeah. it's me, but she'll go, hello, Ron, uh, Elaine, uh, Alex, uh, yeah, Steve. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's the same with each member of the, whoever, whichever one of us she's talking to, laughs. it's the, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. So you've spoken to your mum and dad, you've changed the tiles, you've had lunch, the S telly's not on. Suzanne comes in, you've made her dinner? No. Right. What happens there? Now what happens there? What time does she get in? You've done, uh, you've done all this by about four or five, have you? About, well I'm, I'm tidying up, I, know, I normally keep my eye on the clock. Mm. Uh, I'd like to road. give myself like forty odd minutes to clean up. Right. Kitchen's all clean ready for us to make the tea. Ready okay. for her to make the tea, even though you've been- I know you've been tiling, but that was a sort of- that was a job you gave yourself, you didn't have to do it. Mm. No, but I don't do cooking. She knows that. This- this isn't even a discussion. Right. She knows. Like today, I've got to get some thin chips. So I'll do that. You mean fries? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's frozen- frozen in the bag yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to get some of them. And what yeah. are you having? What are you having tonight? Uh, scampi. So, as a, that, that's shop-bought scampi, just- f what do you do? Just- but, uh, I don't know, she just deep fry it. I don't know. I think it's just chuck it in the oven. Yeah. Yeah. So she'll do all that. I'll eat it. And sorry, don't we just rewind for a second. I'll so eat it. <laughs> He's listing it in his day's work. I'll eat it. Uh, I say, I've eaten that. She goes, thank you. You go, oven. Um, do you ask how her day's been? I'm just interested when she comes in, you Definitely know, not. she's had a Definitely busy day. Not. She's, well, let me, listen, don't jump to conclusions, Rick, all right? <laughs> Okay, so she let's comes just, in. Let's, let, okay, let's act it out. Yeah. Okay, you've just cleaned up, right? The last bit there. You look back. Them tiles look good. You look at the clock. Oh, what time is it? She usually comes through the door. Well, uh, don't know. It can it can change. She calls and warns me. All right. Uh, let's go so through. Take me through. Okay. <sighs> the end of the day. Right. Uh, vacuuming up, cleaning up all the mess. Mm. Uh, oh, phone's going. Who's that? Suzanne. All right? Yeah, coming home. All right then. See you in a bit. She'll go. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put the kettle on. Or at least fill it, ready. Because mm. she normally calls again. 
And, what do you mean? Uh, she calls again? What? She calls again when she's out the tube. Let's do it, let's hear it. What's going on? All right. You out the tube, yeah, do you want a cup of tea? Yeah. All right, see you in a minute. Uh, flick the kettle on. Get the tea bags out. Make a cup of tea. <laughs> milk? Bit of milk. Um, you, 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 sometimes I'll say I'll get us a little treat when you come out the tube. Yeah. Um, so she'll get me, you know, a bounty or something to go with a cup of tea. Right. She'll come it's in. It's tea though, isn't it? Yeah, but it's gonna be another forty odd minutes. So you have a bounty before you have a meal? Not every day, just sometimes. If I fancy, if I need, if I've got a sugar low, I've yeah. got a touch of diabetes. No, you haven't. I have. I feel like a bit shaky. Sometimes. Oh, so you just made that up? So yeah. you did? You have got no evidence whether you got diabetes? Well, I haven't got or not. evidence of it, but I think no, I have. So there's no evidence, but let's believe in it anyway. Right, well, I have a bounty that normally sorts it out. To me, that's a sign of diabetes. <laughs> Otherwise, what's wrong with me? <laughs> so um, you're just a greedy fucker. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, I sometimes need it. I get a proper urge for a Mars bar. I go, I've, I've got to have what one now. What do you have a bounty for then? No, just to mix it up because I get sick of Mars bars. Do you? Yeah. Well, when you, have a, when, you or, when you say get me a bounty, have you got an urge for a bounty then or a Mars bar? Um, well it's just that they're both quite equal in sugar content. Yeah. Bounties, but just, there's a, a lot of that Do you specify up. then when you say get me a treat, she says, well, well what? Sometimes you have a Mars bar, sometimes you have a bounty. No, that's, that's enough for me. I got, when, when she comes in it's a talking topic, isn't it? What have you got me? Topic? <laughs> she, she sometimes gives you a topic. You know, it's, it's it's something to chat about, isn't it? Right, okay. It's something to chat about. So, uh, has there ever been a time- Sorry, I've just gotta get this straight, Steve. Sorry, Rick, I just wanted to say, could, could you- Imagine you and I having a conversation about what chocolate bar you ever brought me. <laughs> What'd you get me, Rick? Uh, got your bounty, is that alright? Thanks, right? mate. That's as long as that conversation can possibly yeah, go. Yeah, You're talking it. about it, it's a talking point. Yeah, so what happens? So what- what's the last time there was a discussion about what she bought you? Did she ever bring you a bounty and you go, oh, I was really hoping for a Mars bar? Um. I think the last time she got a bounty, I sort of said, oh, they do a three-pack now. Do you know how they just have two bars? They do a three-one. Right, what did she say? She said, did he? Did he <laughs> she said, I want out of this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's how a chat starts, and they'll go, yeah, that's why there's fatter people now. Everything's in bigger amounts, innit? It used to just be one, like a Milky Way. Now you can get a three-pack, and then they're saying, oh, there's fat people. Because that's the thing. She's, she's sort of been talking to people all day. I've been tiling. Listening to the radio, hearing reports of obesity, so this is a chance for me to tell her what I've learned in a way. Right. So I'll empty. What I bet I've she learned. loves coming through that door. Well, she comes through, take a coat off. I'll go. Oh. She'll go. What are we having scampi still, or have you gone off the idea? And then I'll go. Oh, you know, we should get them tablets. My mum's been talking about. She goes, what tablets? I go the food. So see how it's all coming together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like that, and that's. That's what does she you. say to the idea of now living on tablets instead of um, having some scampi and chips when she comes home after a hard day's work? What does she, she just say sort to of that? goes, all oh, right. Mm. <laughs> she says, all oh, right. Yeah. So, so, this important information which you're imparting that you've gotten <laughs> during the day, her response to that is, all oh, right. Yeah. So, and then I'll just, I'll get her attention at some point, I'll say there's worms with teeth. <laughs> I'll say I'm gonna bring out the good big guns now. I imagine. Right, all right, she's ignoring me. Okay, wait for this. Really Suzanne, I see you you're ignoring me. Yeah. Worms with teeth. <laughs> oh god. Amazing. Oh, god. So what does she say to worms have teeth? Uh I can't remember. She just she sort of said, Oh, have you got the facts right? I said, Yeah. <coughs> that's that's kind of it. And she'll either go, all right, or she'll uh I mean it's pretty rare that like, it's anything more than that. <laughs> So it's not a conversation, really. It's no, because the response <laughs> twice now has been, "Oh, right, right." So, <laughs> so, so, she's she's looking forward to some scampi and chips. She hands over your bounty. You go, "Oh, they do three, yeah, whatever." Right? What happens next? Take us through. I'll sort of say you got anything to report, anything gone on today, mm -hmm. and she knows it's it's a sort of phase off again. It's like a phone call. She'll go, "Oh, so and so's." leaving or whatever and I don't know these people mm. and I'm not that interested. Mm. And she senses that? Yeah. Yep. Um, so she'll go, oh, have you paid the insurance? I go, no, I forgot. She goes, <laughs> I've told you to do that. I said, yeah, but I've been doing the tiling. She's going, yeah, but you didn't, weren't meant to do the tiling. I should sort the insurance out on the washer because the washer keeps breaking. Um, and she won't let me fix it, even though I know what it was, it was a heating element. I Over. said, I know how to fix that. But she was going, no, I don't want you messing with it, because if you flood the kitchen out, it's, you know, makes a mess. So anyway, so I've got to sort that out, I still haven't done it, I should have done that today. Uh, then have a game of crib. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! 
Oh, it's God. like being in an old people's home. I know. But I'll tell you what, put the telly on, cos there's some flump on there that <laughs> might- might give you an insight. No. No? No, not until- uh, in, in, like I've said to you before, unless she knows what she's putting it on for, mm. it doesn't go on. Right. None of this flicking so it on. So when she says, let's put the telly on, you go, oh, okay, Suzanne, what are we gonna watch? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, what- And, what? She, and she goes, and she goes, well, I don't know, should we have a look what's on? I say look what's on first. But have you got a Radio Times or a TV? Yeah, I've got a, like a magazine that comes with a paper at the weekend. Okay. Look through that. If there's anything on your fancy, we'll look at it. <laughs> if not, we don't need it on. Put the radio on. Right. And then she has a look and she'll go, the apprentice is on. I'll go, okay, you can have it on. Right. Uh, if she goes, oh, there's, I can't remember a time when I've said, no, you're not having that on. Um. You're quite patriarchal, aren't you, wouldn't you say? What do you mean? Well, well, the man of the house rules the roost. Yeah, you pretty Not much really. lay the rules down, don't you? They, no, because she down. still does what she wants, even though I'm saying you're clumping about again, making a racket, she does it more. But it works, doesn't it? Yeah. Sounds like it. And, um, so, you've, you've had a lovely game of crib with Suzanne, cos, you know, the magic's still there, <laughs> and, uh, what time do you hit the sack? Dunno, about eleven. Do you go to bed at the same time? Yeah. So that's it, yeah, that's so, the day, really. Well, hang on, we haven't finished yet. So, y any conversation before bed? Uh, depends if the radio is on. I might say, look, here's that story about the worm. Yeah. Mm. And then she'll go, yeah, but look, it hasn't got teeth. It said this, that and the other, and I'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, forgot. Good night. That's the end of that, really. Another day closer to death. Well, that was a, a free podcast. Um, I suppose we'd call that a day in the life of Carl Pilkington. That's a little thank you to all the fans who bought the audio books. <laughs> it's not much of a gift, is it? Wow, it's something, isn't it? I mean, I know Carl did it begrudgingly, but thank you for downloading the audio books all these years. Carl's very grateful, really. It means he can go and buy as much grout in as he'll ever need. Um, and thank you to people who've uh, bought the book, An Idiot Abroad, and uh, watched the programme. If you, you still can't get enough, Carl. The DVD in Idiot Abroad is out. That's a lovely Christmas gift for all the family. Order that now at Amazon.co.uk or Calm or yeah, HMV or Yeah, or your retailer of choice. Your retailer, hey, retailer of, of choice. choice. I'll go out, or go out and buy it. Go yeah, out get off walk. your arse and buy it. Go out for a walk and buy an Idiot Abroad on DVD and the book. And what a lovely Christmas gift the Ricky Gervais show would make as well on DVD. Animated ramblings from the round-headed moron. Some people don't even realise that the Idiot Abroad is Carl Pilkington from the Ricky Gervais Show. If you're on Twitter and Facebook and MySpace and- or if you've got just friends you actually talk to via the mouth, <laughs> then tell them if they enjoyed An Idiot Abroad to get the Ricky Gervais Show on audiobook or DVD. And while you're at it, buy my new stand-up on DVD, Science. No, I don't know. I don't know, Rick. That mm. seems a shameless plug. Yeah. Well, what was all- what was all the other shit then? Yeah, that was just talking to the fans, That's cos you get a third of all the other stuff. Alright, let's not talk- let's not reduce it to money. Hmm. Carl's on it. On what? On the, uh, science DVD. I've done a special programme where I interview him for science, which is amazing. Um, but my favourite bit is probably when, uh, he meets Warwick Davis. His little- I stitched him right up. He thought he was gonna have a talk about science. We hid Warwick, right? Well, it that's was not hard, is it? <laughs> We had to keep him in a different room, and then Carl sat down, just thought he was talking about science, and I went, got a little fella, and Warwick walks out, and your little face, and Warwick confronted him over some of the, uh, words he's used. Midget. Yes, I remember the famous, uh, midget mm. hippotam hippopotamus story. Yeah. I'm sure you used the word midget there far too many times. Yeah. So there's a few things to buy at Christmas. Go out and buy one of our DVDs or books. This was free. Now pay for something. <laughs>